Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, good day, uh, good afternoon, wherever you are, and thank you for joining me on the show today, The Silver and Show. I've got a guest who is an author. Her name is Miss Olive Pellington. And Miss Pellington have this book called One Book, Two Books, Three, Four, and Five, The Path Two. Now, when I say The Path Two, there are actually five versions of these. But before I go any further, I'll let Olive explain it. Miss Pellington. Hi. <laughs> good afternoon, good day. Afternoon. How are you? I'm good, thank you. Fantastic. Thank you for coming on the show today and to share with us about the path to. Yeah. Now, explain the path to, because that is what I have as you heading, and, and explain the concept of the path to. Okay. Um, the path to is really about life. Yes. So you've heard of the saying, life is a journey. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people don't tend to take that too seriously. You know, it's just a saying, oh, yes, I'll say it to you, I'll say it to you. It doesn't really matter yes. about that. But when you actually have a look at life as a journey, it really is you creating a path to yes. whatever it is that you want to create. Yes. That's why I ended up calling these books The Path To. So it's the path to who it is that you're becoming. That's interesting you say that um, one create their path and their journey. Yeah. But what do you think about providence? What do I think about it? Because providence, they say, is like things are already in place. Um, mm -hmm. It's already set. It's already in motion. So it makes you say, do we really create path? Or is it already established for us to go through? Well. Sorry, I put you on the spot. You did. That. You did. <laughs> but I'm just thinking there because that is something that I considered when writing these books. Yes. Now, one thing you have to understand about these books is that they have come from a place of the experiences that I've had myself, the experiences that I've had with the students that I coach, yes. and so on. So, yes, sometimes I do think there are certain things in life that are there ahead of you yes. that you have to go through. Mm -hmm. For example, everybody's got to do an exam yes. <laughs> in secondary school. But the way that turns out for you is mm -hmm. something that you can actually create. It's something that you can create a path to. Yes. It's something that you can actually make your way towards. So the outcome isn't fixed. Yeah. But perhaps the experiences you have to go through are. Yeah. Now, in, in order for someone to understand um, the path to purpose and the mm -hmm. path to enthusiasm, which is just two of the series here, um, there are other versions, path to success, uh, path to learning, yep. path to energy. What then, and who is Miss Pellington, and what's your journey that took you to here? Right. Because it, I believe very strongly that people buy people. And books. Yes. yes. People do buy people. Yes, <laughs> yes. But who is that person? You're yes, quite right. Yes. So my journey from schooling to now has always been about learning. It's always been about <coughs> making the most of the experiences that you yes. go through, you know, both the good and the not so good. Yeah. I do believe that there are lessons in everything that we experience. Mm. And that lesson if you take it on board, if you use it in the right way, yes. can springboard you into the next experience and a higher level of experience, if you like, yes. as well. So that's how I've come about. So all the way through education, through my career, through to now coaching teams, you know, that's been my journey really, is how do I put these lessons to good use? Coaching teens, yeah. and in regards to what is happening now with society, with young people, yeah. and um, twice, and I've seen it in your bio, whereby you coach teens and young people. Mm -hmm. What is the answer to some of the crisis which is happening mm -hmm. now with young people? To be honest, I don't think there is one answer to anything. I mean, mm. like everything in life, things evolve. Yes. So what I say to you today could change within the next 5, 10, 15 years. Yes. But one thing I would say about what is going on now, I think people need to be taking on more personal responsibility for what is happening in society. Yes. So. Yes, we can blanket certain groups of people, you know, the adults, the teens, the, te mm. the teachers, the counsellors, whoever it might be. But unless we take personal responsibility for what's yeah. going on in those situations, nothing will get done mm. at the end of the day. So can we be more responsible for the decisions we make? Of course we can. Can we be more responsible for the experiences we'd like to have? Yes, we mm. can. I mean, we're going through this big Brexit thing right now, yeah. right? Um, and I think if people had have looked at that, for themselves as individuals yes. rather than a collective, okay, you know, um, we all want to be out or we all don't want to be out. I think things may have been a little bit different. I don't mm. think we'd have rushed into things 
the way yes, that we had it done. Interesting you mentioned Brexit and uh, yeah. are you a Brexiter? One way or answer. the other? Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather not answer. I could, but that's a whole other discussion. Yeah, it? yeah. <laughs> yeah. Now, it's, it's interesting you mentioned that because mm. um, taking responsibility mm. is, is a key factor. And, and, and you, you, many people know I talk a lot about Brexit on my program. So when you okay. say that, you're like, wow. Yeah, you want to have going that. going crazy now, you know, talking about Brexit. Yeah. But, but you said the responsibility and the actions that people take yeah. today affect the future. Mm -hmm. and, and what you conjure up right there, it is right. Many people did not actually consider their actions when they were voting. Right. It was like um, being led. Uh, is it right? Led like a mob or something like that? People are just being led to a certain way? <laughs> like a group, yeah, like or a, a group. movement. Or, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. That, I that's, do agree. That's interesting. Yeah. So let's, let's break down because I've got f five aspects of your book. And, yeah. and ladies and gentlemen, these books will be launched and be published, sorry, uh, in, February? in February, February yeah. 2019. So look out for this for 2019. The path to success. What's the, I'm breaking them up. First, the path to success. Yes. Yes. So it's all about being successful. What does success mean to you as an individual? Yes. Because again, we have a dictionary definition of what success is. Yes. We have TV's version of what success yes, is. Yes. We have the schooling's version of what success is. So what, you know, what is success to you? What is that like yes. for you as an individual? Okay. So that's what we're talking about there. Do you recognize the little successes as well as the humongous successes? Right. How do they stack up? Right. And how does that you know, um, form you as a person later on down the road? So in a way, it is empowering persons to recognize that you can't compare your success to another person's success because it's somewhat a bit subjective. Yeah, and I think it's, it's a bit more than just empowerment. We tend yeah. to use that quite a lot now. It's, it's really internalising all of this yes. and finding yourself within a bigger community and society. Could you say f a failure could be deemed as a success in some respect? Oh, most definitely. Explain Again. that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, I talk about these lessons yes. that we get from different experiences. Yes. So what one person might see as a failure is actually a learning point. Yes. Or a stepping stone. Yes. That's how we've got to have a look at this general term failure. So what is the experience? What did we gain from not having success with yes. that particular experience? Yes. And how can we use it to better ourselves the next time? Right? You know, I, I used this analogy the other day yeah. uh, of um, uh, negative energy. Mm. And I used the analogy of a surfer. Okay. When a surfer is surfing, he's trying to get away from these massive waves. Now, many people see those waves as angry monsters coming at him. Yeah. But he waits for the angry mob or the angry wave mm -hmm. he rides it. Right. And he rides that to his ultimate goal. So therefore, uh, uh, something which has been a failure or whatever mm -hmm. is like a stepping stone, a block right. to where can, one can empower themselves on, isn't it? Exactly. Wow. Now, path to learning. Yes. That's the next one. The path to learning. Now, that really came about with the experience that students are having in schools you know a mm. lot of the things that I hear students say is my teacher this or I can't that and so on and so forth it's all about the learning experience having a more positive learning experience when yes. it comes to schooling yes. how can you be more responsible for making sure that you get the lessons that you're supposed to learn at school yes. get the knowledge that you're supposed to learn you know it doesn't all take place in a classroom and right. so what I do with the path to learning is show students how they can actually you know, use their everyday life, their social time, if you like, or their yeah. out-of-school life to actually gain more knowledge. Okay, so that's a part of the learning curve, not to yeah. just take it that um, you're in your classroom, I'm going to learn, but actually recognize that also outside there's mm -hmm. a part. So what you do now, you try to uh, uh, get into their, change their mindset, if anything. Yes, that would be a good yeah. way of putting it. Yeah. Yeah. So where are these students? Where, where, where are these students? You're a teacher. Mm -hmm. No, I, I have been a teacher. That yes, was in yes. my past life. I'm now a coach now. Yes. Um, so the majority of my students, yes, do, um, or I see them in schools. Yes. But I do have private students as well okay. who I coach. Okay, fantastic. And the path to enthusiasm, which yeah. is unfortunate to have one, um, what is the key to enthusiasm? It's like me, bang, <laughs> excited, <laughs> you know? bang, bang, bang. <laughs> Oh, you'd have thought so. No, it's not that at all. 
um, you know, you get all sorts of students. You do get the ones who are always on the go. Yes. But then you get some students who are much more laid back. So this is all about, okay, how can you use yourself? How can you use it, you know, the way that you show up in yes. the best way possible? Yes. It's about having enthusiasm to do a thing mm -hmm. rather than trying to force yourself to get through a task. Yes, yes, yes. And next one is the path to energy. Yeah. The is path that, to energy. Is that yeah. oil from Russia? Huh? Is that oil from Russia? No. <laughs> <laughs> but um, energy, it's, it's, it's all about our physical selves, mm. okay? So the things that we put into our body, how our bodies actually work, the chemistry within our bodies, and yeah. how we can, again, hone all of that in to where we want to be in the future, again, using our energy to create that path to where we mm -hmm. want to be. Mm. And finally, the path to purpose, passion, <clears throat> and perseverance. Mm -hmm. Now, that is a bigger book. Yeah. <laughs> it is all about the big why, okay? Yes, there are certain things, as you alluded to before, that mm. we do go through that's already in place for us. But unless we know why we're doing these things, yes. unless we know what we're going to get at the end of that and what we're going to use it for, then there isn't much enthusiasm or energy to get through it, so we're yes. not going to do the learning. If we have that purpose and passion and perseverance, we will see it through. Yeah. The, the path of purpose, passion and perseverance mm. um, seems like it's three books in one or so, is it? Um, no. Mm. Um, <coughs> it's basically because I don't believe you can have one without the other. You're right about that. You're right about that, actually. Purpose and passion. Passion drive purpose. Purpose plus passion. And perseverance is like the oil mechanism that keeps them going. There you go. Wow, that's powerful. So you'll you have to give a, a quote or so. But I want to talk about sleep. Because you mentioned mm -hmm. about the series allows you to harness the power of sleep. Mm -hmm. And by sleep. What do you mean by sleep? Yeah. When you think about sleep now, I'm thinking, hang on, we're shutting down. <laughs> So sleep really is an acronym for success, learning, enthusiasm, energy, purpose, passion, perseverance. So ladies okay. and gentlemen, go into your bed at night and you say, that's not the only sleep. Sleep is the other aspect of it. You know? Yeah. Um, but now tell us now, the, the five books yeah. are in A, B, C, D, E. Well, I put them in a, in a particular order. Mm -hmm. is, is there a particular order for these coming out or you want all of them at the same time? Right, all of these books will be published at the same time. And no, there is no particular order. Yes. The reason for them being in the five series, if you like, is so that students can pick up what they need, when they need it, and run with it. Yes. The reason that it wasn't in one big book is because a lot of textbooks are one big book. This yes. is not a textbook. Right. Okay, this is more about learning to learn about yourself. Yes. So the whole reason we talk about sleep there, you know, when it comes to the parents, a lot of parents complain about their teenagers doing nothing but sleep and they don't seem yes. to do anything but sleep. Yeah, yeah. Well, if we, again, take that responsibility and you sleep in a different way, mm. we're accessing our learning. And believe it or not, you can actually learn in your sleep too. Yeah, okay. yeah, <laughs> yeah sometimes you learn things. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Then, you know, where I'm going with this is, is that if you can pick up a snippet of something, you're more likely to hold on to that information than if you're to go through a big, thick book. Yes, yes. So what you're doing, you're giving some um, bite size. Very much so. And, and, and what you're tapping into is that, could it be, Olive, mm. that persons now, yeah. their concentration span is very short. People don't want to watch things too long. Mm -hmm. People don't want to read things too long. Mm -hmm. um, is it that we're in a, a microwave sort of generation whereby we need to mm. give it to persons in bite size? Yeah, I think we first started seeing that, didn't we, in the sort of like 80s and 90s with the yeah. Pop-Tart thing going yes, on. Yes, yes, yes. But yes, I would say so. But again, if you, if, if you think about anything that we learn for the first time, if we sit for too long a duration, we'll still only get that small snippet. A diminishing return to a certain extent. Right. It? So what we need to be doing is, okay, like you say, having those small bites, mm. learning a lot more yes. over a shorter amount of time. Yeah. It can actually happen. Wow. And what I find with, you know, with the subjects that I've written about there and with some of these exercises in the book, mm. I actually use as exercises with my students. Yes. And we're finding that you know, they can actually get through um, certain issues or they can actually overcome certain issues mm. very, very quickly by just having these bite-sized exercises. And this is a bit here, John, John Maxwell, which you have there. People yes. don't care how much you know 
until they know how much you care. Yes. So what you're doing, you're capturing key um, quotes as well. Mm. See any detour as an opportunity, experience new things. That is the whole thing where we talk about, um, you could even say, see any failure as an opportunity and experience. Right. What happened when you fail? How did you feel when you fail? Listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. Did you feel like going again or did you want to find out what were the ingredients? Right, exactly that. So therefore, failure is not failure. It's a stepping stone to great success, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Where can persons get these books from, um, Olive? Okay, they can actually get them um, on pre-order right yeah. now from thepath2.co.uk. Okay, we'll put that on, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. but they will actually be available on Amazon in February when they are officially published. Yes, yes. And your publishing house? Yep, Marcia M Publishing Marcia House. Marcia M. Yes. She seems to be getting around, isn't it? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Phenomenal, phenomenal. Yeah, we, we've got to, we've got to we've got to actually um, you see I, I like the and I, I said it to your other um, colleagues as well that I think it's so important to capture our story our mindset our thinking yeah. into books because for years um, we have been getting other person's mindset other person's story other person's thinking mm. and we're running with it so it's it's a it's it's a it's a shift. It's a paradigm shift as yeah. much as possible. Now, I want to ask you this question. This is something which I always ask guests, and because there's so much that you, which are in these books, mm -hmm. but I want you to give me something or give your viewers something by looking at these cameras here. What is your favorite mantra or words that empower you, that you will say when you're downtime, say, bang, you know? You know, you quoted it right there. Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> Which was the John Maxwell quote. Yeah. You know, so you want me to say it into please, this please, camera yeah. right here. And, and, and em emphasize on it as well. Yeah, yeah as sure. Well. well, John Maxwell says, people don't know how much you care. Sorry, people don't know, don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. So I'll say that one more time. Yeah, <laughs> that's okay. So people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And by that, what he's saying is, you need to care about people. You mm. could be the most knowledgeable person in the world. You think of your teachers, uh, you think of your parents, you think of those people that you look up to, okay? Yes, they have a lot of knowledge, but you don't actually want to be around those people because of their knowledge. Yes. You're around those people because they care about the things you care about and they care about you. If you could be that way for others, think how much different this world could actually be right now. And that's one of the things that I like to do. So wow. I like being able to care about my students, yes. care about what is actually going on in their world, care about their education yes. and the, the purpose that they have in this world as well and help yes. them to share that yes. with their fellow students. Because yes. again, that is the next generation. They're the ones that are going to be looking mm. after us at the end of the day. Of course, we need to care about what's yeah. going on with them. And, and what you say is very important. And for any parents or young people watching on is that even with the, the news, and I, even though I mentioned about what's happening with the young people, mm. one thing I didn't point out was that the majority of young people are doing well, mm. and they're doing great, they're fantastic. But of course, you'll have a, a small proportion who is maybe wayward or doing things, you know, with the knife crime yes, and everything like that. But, but, but you have said also that young people need to know that we do care about them. Yeah. You know, not just about, you know, as I said, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Any last word you want to say? Yeah, just um, on, on that there, you know, there are good students out there. Yeah. And I think a lot of the time they do get missed out. Yes. There are students who need to be helped with their experiences. Yes, we yes, know that. Yes. But we have to start looking at everyone and what each of these people can actually bring to the world, what yes. they can actually bring to their communities yes. and start helping from that point. Wow, wow. That's good. Well, I want to thank you so much. Thank you. Miss Pellington, <laughs> Olive Pellington. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you have heard um, just a snippet, and I can only give you a snippet. You've got to get the full version by getting all these books, which will be launched in February, right? You can pre-order. You can get the details from the website and also from her site as well. But let's break them down. The path to success, crucial. The path to learning, the path to enthusiasm, the path to energy, the path to purpose, passion and perseverance, which is a heavyweight. And that's a heavyweight because passion and purpose interlink and perseverance is actually what drives you at the same time because when things are going rough or going tough, 
you persevere against the odds. You know, remember what I talk about the, the wave? You know, so therefore, I want to encourage you to get these books, The Path. This is just two versions of five versions. For young people, it's bite-sized chunk. And I say bite-sized chunk, not bits, chunk, because each one is very powerful. And, you know, so thank you very much. And see you next time on The Silburn Show. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us on The Silburn Show. And uh, of course, what I'd like you to do is to like the videos, share the videos, and subscribe to the channel. Let people know about it. But the important thing is also to comment. Let us get your comment, let us get your views, so we can understand how to even please you better, ladies and gentlemen. So as I said, share, like, subscribe. Ah, thank you. I saw you there. You subscribed and you shared. Thank you so much. See you next time.